Now we come to another Elizabethan sonneteer, Samuel Daniel, who has his own significance in the history of English poetry. Like other poets, we will examine the historical and literary context in which the poet was born. We will also see the surroundings in which his sonnet sequence Delia came out in 1592. We will also deal with two specific sonnets from this sonnet sequence. Sonnet number 2 is Go Wailing Verse, The Infants of My Love. Sonnet number 50 is Let Others Sing of Knights and Paladins. What are the historical and literary contexts that shaped Samuel Daniel, the poet who was born in 1563 and who died in 1619? In this period, we see that two monarchs ruled England. Queen Elizabeth ruled England from 1558 to 1603 and King James I was the monarch from 1603 to 1625. In this period, Daniel wrote many number of poems, plays, historical books, sonnets. And in fact, Daniel wrote a play called Cleopatra, which became a model for Shakespeare's Antony and Cleopatra and later Dryden's play All for Love. Daniel also wrote a significant historical book, The Civil Wars, which is a source for Shakespeare's play Richard II. It is suggested that Daniel came out with this idea of poetry being used to immortalize the lady love. Perhaps he also influenced Shakespeare in sonnet writing too. There was some kind of professional rivalry between Samuel Daniel and Ben Jonson when it came to receiving the attention of King James the first. Both were playwrights, both were poets, both were writing mass pageants to entertain the court and both got appreciation from the king. So, it was a kind of competitive situation between Samuel Daniel and Ben Johnson. As we noted, Samuel Daniel is a wide ranging author, primarily a poet, but he came out as he said with historical accounts of England. One of the earliest professional writers in England is Samuel Daniel. He earned his livelihood through writing only. Samuel Daniel wrote Petrarchan sonnets, his sonnets and the sonnets of Wordsworth and even the way of life of Petrarch and Wordsworth is similar to Samuel Daniel in the sense that these writers chose to live away from the city life or they did not like to have the presence of power centers. Say Daniel translated from Italian writings and so he introduced the Italian sweetness and ease of writing into English poetry. The sonnet sequence that Samuel Daniel published in 1592 is called Delia. Daniel is closely associated with the Sydney circle and so it is said this collection of sonnets in Delia was inspired by Sydney's own writings. In fact, when Daniel publishes sonnet sequence, he published it along with Sydney's 
sonnet sequence Astrophel and Stella, more to get attention to himself. When it was published, Delia had 50 sonnets. If you look at the title, we will see that Delia is an anagram for ideal. This particular volume he dedicated to his patron Mary Sidney, the Countess of Pembroke, a sister of Sidney. Now, let us read Sonnet 2. It is a very interesting poem, totally different from the sonnet sequence that we have in other writers. Go wailing verse, the infants of my love, Minerva like, brought forth without a mother. Present the image of the cares I prove, witness your father's grief exceeds all other. Sigh out a story of her cruel deeds with interrupted accents of despair, a monument that whatsoever reads may justly praise and blame my loveless fair. Say her disdain hath dried up my blood and starved you, in succours still denying, pressed her eyes, importune me some good, waken her sleeping pity with your crying, knock at that hard heart, beg till you have moved her and tell the unkind how dearly I have loved her. Here is a poem from a poet, the speaker imagines himself as a father of his own verses and tells a verses to go to his lady love to request the lady love to have pity on the father, so that he could become energetic, alive and write more poems of course, for the lady. We see the rhyming scheme here on my right side A B A B and the like, we will look at the rhyme, rhyme scheme a little later. Now, let us examine the poem using the idea of thematic contrast. What are the ideas contrasted within this uh, poem? Actually, we have the, we have the poet writing to the lady through verse, his own verse as a messenger. It is for love and this love is juxtaposed with the idea of death or the impending death. If the poet does not receive more of love from his lady love, his blood may dry up, his poetry may die and in in that means, he may also die. The poet wants to convey the message that he loves his beloved dearly through his own words as a messenger, but then he adopts a tone of accusation and condemnation towards the lady, because the lady is not listening to him. He praises his own sincere love and charges the woman as a loveless and unkind woman. The poem shows how he suffers due to lack of reciprocal love from his lady love, which affects his poetry endlessly, perhaps his life as well. In this poem, we see that verse is imagined, metaphorized into an infant not born of a woman, but the poet, the father like Minerva, the goddess of wisdom. Love and hate, this contrast we can see in this poem. Similarly, we can also see love full and loveless. The poet is full of love, the lady is without any love. We can see kindness in the poet and cruelty in his lady love. Further, we have one more contrast of starvation and nourishment. The poor poet wants to be nourished by the love, kindness, support of his lady love. There are some poetic devices in this poem. The first one is apostrophe. It is quite interesting to see how the poet addresses his own verses, his own poetry as a messenger. We also see 
that verse is personified as a messenger and also the verse is considered to be a motherless child, but the verse has his or her father. We also notice transferred epithet in the case of wailing words, actually it is a poet who wails, moans, cries, but he attributes his own feeling of sorrow to verses. Similarly, we find the lady is sleeping, in her the pity is not awakened. So, he points out that it is pity who is sleeping. Next, let us see this classical allusion. We saw this Minerva like verse that is not born of a woman. This Minerva is a Roman goddess of war, wisdom, arts. She came out of the head of her father Jove directly and so she does not have a mother. Like that, the verses have come out of the head imagination of the poet. We notice some alliterations also in this poem. Minerva goes with mother, we have sigh out a story, disdain dried up, starved you in suckers still. These alliterations go to support the poet's creative endeavor to attract the attention of his lady love. The structure, rhyme and rhythm of this poem can be discussed now. We have three quatrains, each of them is a command to verse that is the poetry written by the poet. We also have a couplet which is well integrated with the rest of the poem. The, the rhyme scheme is this A B A B C D C D E F E F G G. This is a Shakespearean kind of format we have. We also have rhyming words love, mother, prove, other, deeds, despair, reads, fair, blood, denying, good, crying, her, her. Sometimes when we look at these rhyming words, they will give us some clue to understand the theme of the poem. For example, love prove, proving the poet's love for his lady love through his words as a messenger is the chief motive in this poem. We can see similar meanings throughout the poem through these rhyming words. We have a cesura without minor variations. If you count the number of syllables, you will find most of them have 4 or 5 syllables after, after this uh, cesura. Go wailing verse, Minerva like, if you count the number of syllables, you will find almost similar. So, we do not have much variation, but there are cesuras. We can also see n stopped lines throughout the poem and that means there is a kind of attempt break the end of or the impasse in the love of this lady. On the whole, we see that Daniel presents a desperate picture of himself and his words to the reader. Both he and his poem may cease to exist if his lady love does not show pity on him. Hence, he tells his words to wake the sleeping pity in her by knocking hard at her heart, so that she may wake up and show some pity on the poet. Daniel's cry for pity from his beloved is visible through the images of verse as children begging their stepmother that is a beloved to save their father that is a speaker by the lady's love. It is a very interesting case of conceiving poetry in a totally different format or different way from other Elizabethan sonneteers. The lady love is not just a beautiful woman, 
she is also something like the stepmother for the verses written by the poet. Let us move to the second sonnet we have, sonnet 50. Let others sing of knights and paladins in aged accents and untimely words, paint shadows in imaginary lines which well the reach of their high wits records. But I must sing of thee and those fair eyes, authentic shall my words in time to come when yet the unborn shall say, lo where she lies whose beauty made me him speak that else was dumb. These are the arcs, the trophies I erect that fortify thy name against old age and these thy sacred virtues must protect against the dark and times consuming rage. Though the error of my youth they shall discover suffice they show I lived and was thy lover. Again we have a fantastic poem in this sonnet, let us examine it now. What is the thematic contrast that we have? We have a contrast between two kinds of poets, epic poets and love poets. Epic poets like Spencer and the Italian Ariasto, they were singing of knights and ladies in a fairy land. Love poets like Daniel, they sing of their beloved in the real world. So, this, the poet who is speechless, who is unable to write poetry, is able to write poetry or contribute something to poetry because the again the speechless lady who, whose beauty is inspiring the poet to write poems for himself and for his lady love. The beauty of the lady, the sleeping lady or the speechless lady can inspire poets who may not be as articulate as we may think. That is why the poet says dumb, but he becomes full of speech if the lady could show his love to him. Daniel considers verse to be a protection against the onslaught, or onslaught of time like many other poets including Shakespeare. The speaker's children that is a verses would find out their father's error from the poem, but then the poet is happy that he lived and loved his beloved versus his children. The readers who may read the uh, verses will come to know that he had a lady loved like this, but that does not matter. He is happy that he lived and loved and died. That is why it is often said it is better to lie and lose rather than die without love at all. Many poets follow this wholeheartedly. We have a number of poetic devices here again in this poem. Allusion is the first one. Paladins is a reference that we have in this particular poem. Paladin means 12 highest peers serving the emperor Charlemagne in the popular romance by Boyardo and Ariasto. It also has a reference to Spencer's The Fairy Queen. We have another allusion in the same context, paint the shadows in, in imaginary lines referring to platonic idea of love and the idealistic love that Spencer presented in the fairy queen. We also have pun in accents and words, aged accents, old ones we have to renew them, untimely words, we poets played with such words and accents and Daniel wants to come out with new kinds of words, new kinds of accents in his poetry. There is also a metaphor that is dominant in the form of a personification of verse and also verses, arcs and trophies. A very interesting poetic device we have in this poem that is called hyperbaton otherwise known as inversion change of word order. We have 
four examples in these 14 lines. Daniel's subversion of the dominance of romantic epic into lyrical sonnet may be indicated through, through this kind of inversion of word order in his poem that refers to romances. There are four instances, the first one which well the reach of their high wits records, the second example and those fair eyes authentic shall my words in time to come, third example and these thy sacred virtues must protect, I have indicated the normal word order in terms of underlining and these must protect the sacred virtues. Similarly, we can see in other examples as well. Let us see the next one, though the error of my youth they shall discover, though they shall discover the error of my youth. This is a kind of inversion that we notice in this particular sonnet. This particular poem has three quartines and three actions again we have in this sonnet. The, son, the sonnet is well integrated with the couplet at the end of this uh, poem. We have this rhyme scheme A B A B C D C D E F E F and G G. The rhyming words go like this, Palladin's words, lines records, eyes calm, lies dumb, erect age, protect rage, discover and lover. We have five pauses in mid lines in the whole sonnet. We have a number of run on lines that is enjambment we have in this sonnet. Here we have one example. Let others sing of knights and paladins in aged accents and untimely words. Like this we have examples in line 3 and 4, lines 5 and 6 and lines 11 and 12. In all we can, we can see that the poet takes a scornful and sarcastic tone towards the works of past and contemporary poets as he wants to sing of his love swiftly and eternally in the sonnet in real world, not in some fairy land. The poem is not only about the poet's love for his lady, it is also about how other poets have written about love and how Daniel also writes about love differently. Thus, Daniel distinguishes himself from the past poets and other poets. In this lecture, we have examined the two sonnets of Samuel Daniel who lived in the Elizabethan period and also in the Jacobian period. He was a poet, playwright and historian. We examine the sonnet sequence Delia published in 1592 with reference to two specific sonnets sonnet number 2, go wailing words, the infants of my love and sonnet number 50, let others sing of knights and paladins. At the end we found Daniel distinguished himself as a distinct poet by using verse as a messenger to his lady love. He also took issues with poets of the past and his contemporary poets and wanted poets to come into the real world to write about real love. Let us see some references for you now. Critical interest in Samuel Daniel is current as you can see in one of the references from Tutalian published in 2013. Hope you find some of them and enjoy reading more of Daniel's poems. Thank you.